comes first. You're watching WECT News. On Sunday morning, October 23rd, 1983, a terrorist drove a truck filled with explosives up to the Marine Corps barracks in Beirut, Lebanon. The ensuing explosion leveled the battalion landing team headquarters, killing 241 members of America, America's military, most of them Marines from Camp Lejeune. New York Times bestselling author, former Navy SEAL Jack Carr, and Pulitzer Prize finalist, military historian James M. Scott, have co-authored Targeted Beirut, a new book that details what led up to one of the deadliest attacks ever against the United States and what they call the origin story of the war on terror. And we are honored to have Jack Carr and James Scott with yeah. us in the studio. Gentlemen, thank you for taking the time. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Absolutely. Great to see you. How do you find the time to do things? You've got all your novels. You've got two streaming series you're working on with James Reese and Ben Edwards. Where did the genesis of this book come out of, Jack? Well, I always knew that I'd branch out into nonfiction eventually. Tom Clancy did that in the early 90s with his uh, uh, guided tour and his um, uh, it was a, a study in command. So he started doing two nonfiction series in the early 90s after he'd done multiple novels. But when I talked to Simon & Schuster about this initially, uh, they loved the idea of doing a series on different terrorist events that essentially changed the course of history. And I kept coming back to Beirut 1983 because it was such a pivotal time in our relationship with the Middle East. And there were terrorist events before, there have been terrorist events after, but October 1983 really set the rules for what was to come. It's the model, the paradigm that we've been in with Iran, and Iran really set those rules back in October of 1983. James, as a yep. military historian, did you learn anything new in doing the research for targeted Beirut? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, my specialty has, has been World War II for the most part. So this, for me, was an opportunity to branch into a whole different conflict, you know, getting into more modern uh, events, terrorism and whatnot. And I think, too, one of the great things that Jack and I both really benefited from this project was, you know, besides the archival work, which is something I am very accustomed to doing with, uh, with history, was the, uh, the opportunity to interview so many of the survivors from mm -hmm. Beirut. Uh, we did over 100 hours of interviews with uh, folks who were there. Uh, we talked to widows of men who were killed. We talked to the children. We even talked to parents. And so, because as Jack noted, we really wanted to get, we wanted to humanize this. Mm -hmm. and, and this is their story. And so we wanted to get out of the way of that. And we wanted to get as much of their story as possible. So there are so many of the survivor stories that you t uh, recount in in the book. Did any stick out any more than others? I mean, I know it's like asking you which one of your books There's is the a few. favorite. No, but no, I mean, these any, guys. Any of them? No, these really? guys all have, all have incredible stories. And they're stories between the event that you mentioned that happens in April, the embassy bombing, right. and the barracks and headquarters bombing in October. There was a whole spring and summer where these guys were essentially in combat. Um, and some of, these, some of these stories are just incredible. You have someone who's on the fourth deck who essentially rides this whole building down, a chaplain who's going to end up being the last person pulled from the rubble five hours later who has right. an argument with God while he can't move. He's in complete darkness and he's thinking of Louis L'Amour novels that he'd read right. with cowboys and miners trapped in cave-ins and how they had to dig their way out, fight their way out. Um, and Don Howell who's in the basement and this whole thing collapses essentially on top of him uh, and says the Lord's Prayer, opens his eyes and sees this little shaft of light and claws his way out. There are just so many stories of survival, perseverance, and resilience. Once again, the book is called Targeted Beirut, written by New York Times bestselling author Jack Carr and Pulitzer Prize finalist James M. Scott, available now. And tonight the authors are going to be at Barnes & Noble Books in Jacksonville at 6 o'clock. More information on the book and on both of these gentlemen inside this story on our website. Jack and James, thank you for taking the time. We appreciate it. And thank you for this work because I think this is going to mean more to a lot of people even than you think it will. Appreciate your time. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. For Thanks so much us. for having us. Yeah. Thank you.